On a previous program, we talked with Cameron. We really didn't finish up with Cameron. Cameron is a preacher's kid, and his dad had affairs, and he's angry at his mother. And uh, let's see. Cameron, are you there? Are you yes, still? Sir. Okay. So, Cameron, we're just going to try to boil this down for this program. Y your father was unfaithful. Now, you, you've you had your, right. your run in with alcoholism and stuff, and 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 really the whole family was a mess isn't that right yes so sir. so dad was a pastor and when he fell it kind of shook up everybody that trickle down effect right that's what we're saying yeah all right yeah it did if there was any way that we could help you today what would it be um i don't know i guess uh anger issues <laughs> i uh how do you express your I anger how does um, it come out? Do you yell? Well, do I, you hit? Do you scream? Do you kick things? What? What? How does it come out? Um, I used to fight, and that that helped out for a while until I stopped fighting, and then it went back to yelling and just tearing people apart mm. with words because yeah. I was also good at that. I had ninety eight men underneath me in the military, so I got yeah. good at learning how to yell and make people do what I said. <laughs> okay, now 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 I want um, you to complete a sentence for me. I okay. I used to fight, and then I started yelling, because what I'm really angry about is just the way things went. Angry about the the way the family blew up. Yeah, uh, I can actually remember the day that uh, that I found out that you know my dad had cheated. Mm. It was. Uh, I was turning 18. Um, my dad was my hero, big time. Oh, I'm so sorry. He and I have, uh, have actually patched, we've patched things up. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, he's not coming back, I don't think. He's, he's completely walked away for what, from what I know. Um, he won't talk to me, to me too much about it. Um, but, uh. But it sounds I like you're carrying it, it. It made my world fall apart. Yeah. It sounds like you're carrying it around like it was yesterday or last year. Well, it feels like I took off to the military a few weeks later last year. So, yeah. Hmm. That was right about the same time. So. Hmm. All right. Well, Mylon, Jill, can, anything we could Cameron, do to help? Cameron, how old are you now? Did you say? Now I'm 28. You're 28. Okay. So this is 10 years. Well, Cameron, your dad abandoned you. He left you. Yeah. And, you know, the Bible says not to make your children angry. It says, dads, don't make your kids angry. And when we abandon our children, when we show them priorities that do not include them, when we show them that we're not committed to the very family that makes them secure, when we just basically leave our unit, we we, right. we teach our children that they don't matter to us. And and in a way, he abandoned you. And I don't blame you for being angry, Cameron. Your, your family puts up this big facade of holiness, competency, pastoral, and then all of a sudden it goes away. And, and you say, well, I'm an angry person. And I go, well, the Bible says don't make your kids angry. And I'm wondering... If if you've ever if your dad's ever apologized if your mom's ever apologized, anything like that happened? Uh, he never really said it. Okay. He never verbally said I apologize. He just kind of he talked to me about it basically. Yeah. And consoled me more or less. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, but well, you're you're hurt. Don't you think, Jill, that Cameron's really hurt inside? Well, yes, and Cameron, when families blow up like this, usually kids, even adult kids, lose both of their parents for a while because, you know, the spouse gets pretty devastated as well. And you were talking earlier about kind of not being, none of this being heard, it not being out in the open or there being denial in your family. And I'm just wondering who you have been able to share this with, who does validate what you went through. For you, um, people out in my church. Okay. Um, but it's really not the same. 
you know, uh, it, it'd be nicer if it could be reconciled within the family, mm-hmm. you know, and, and see people in our family actually come back and want to serve the Lord and have peace and joy instead of, you know, trying to rip each other apart. And I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I, we go to family functions and there's always going to be a fight. I, in fact, we avoid seeing my family because of that most of the time. Well, Cameron, uh, I'm hearing a, a young man that's really uh, burdened, that it's, it's heavy upon you, this thing that has happened. And I, I don't think there's any way for you to get beyond that than to, to grieve the loss of your dad as a hero. He's a fallen hero. doesn't make him all bad. But I think you've still got some work to do there, and I think you've got some work to do, as Milan was saying, on this abandonment thing. Mm -hmm. And I think you've got to get sad and angry and grieve so that in your day-to-day life, you're not getting so angry because you've you've worked through it and you've understood it and and you've seen it in the eyes of an 18-year-old again and experienced it that way so you don't have to experience it when you're 30 or 31 or 32. And Cameron, that desire that you have for the family to come back, you know, you have to start with you. And so there are things that you know are not right about how your family is operating. So now as you grieve and work through this, you don't have to repeat those things. And you can come back to the Lord and serve him and do what you feel is the right thing to do. Yeah. Cameron, if you were here right now— Cameron, if you were here right now, I'd look at you and I'd say, you know, you're a really neat guy. You're a sensitive guy. You're smart. And I think probably the first thing I'd want to do as a dad is just give you a big hug and say, I'm sorry you had to go through mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I I just want you to feel that. I'd give you a big hug right now. That's a horrible thing for you to go through. And I want you to spend some time thinking about what Steve told you, that, you know, you need to do some crying over this. And crying is a re- antidote for anger did you ever heard that before i think i heard something of that it was more in yeah. science class <laughs> it really <laughs> okay. poisons or something well yeah. it does I, and i'm just i feel bad for you bud mm-hmm. yeah well uh, i'm glad that you called us uh, i'll send you uh, healing as a choice and regret free living i hope that they'll be of some comfort to you thanks for serving in the military and mm-hmm. um you know, um, the burden that he has, it's not just anger and frustration, but when a, a parent has an affair, and I think he mentioned multiple, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. He did. Um, yeah. The children wear that shame. Mm-hmm. You, you are putting a, a covering of shame upon them that is very difficult for them to get out of. And, and some people don't ever get out of it. Some people take till they're in their 40s to, get on, to, to remove it. But there's some family shame there. It was like when my grandfather c- uh, committed suicide, my mother wore the shame of that for many, many, many years. And, uh, and, and I just, I know it doesn't matter because people don't care if they're in the midst of the sin. But don't move forward with that affair don't take the temptation because you're going to shuffle a bunch of shame down on on people you love and cameron's trying to repair a family system where the parents aren't cooperating right that's true he is kind of maybe the firstborn or the oldest and it sounds like that Mm -hmm. and so here's mom and dad ought to be doing this repair and here's the the 28 year old now trying to say i we can't even get together as a family yeah. mm-hmm. and he's and he's saying things like you would hear an 18 year old say like I, I don't think he's ever coming back yeah yeah like it was yesterday all right